Here's what, what does, what does that mean? What's it all mean? Believe in your dreams. Well, what does, what does that mean? Hey everyone, it's Call Me Adam, and we are here at Star Dreams Cafe inside the historic Algonquin Hotel in the heart of New York City's theater district. And today, we are dreaming with actress Julie Halston. Hi. Hi, Julie. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm terrific, it's... and I'm back at the Algonquin. Yes. You actually were just telling me that you got married at the Algonquin. I got married at the Algonquin uh, 24 <laughs> years ago, I think. Um, yeah, um, it was, well, we're in the Oak Room. We're in the Room, Oak Room, The yes. historic Oak Room. Yes. And uh, my husband and I, Ralph Howard, uh, we used to come to a lot of cabaret shows mm -hmm. here. We saw, you know, all the greats. Mm -hmm. So we decided when we got married that we would have sort of a show mm -hmm. as well as a small private ceremony in the Helen Hayes room, oh my God. which is where we got married. And then we did, we ended up having this enormous wedding where we invited the public because we did it as a benefit for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Oh, wow. And we raised like $13,000 oh that night. And I literally sometimes will be on the street and people will come up to me and they'll say, you don't know me, but I was at your wedding. <laughs> because we opened it up and also the thing that was so great was there were people here at the at the hotel mm -hmm. and they got little um, cards underneath all their doors saying um, we're taking over the oak room uh, it, it's going to be very busy here tonight just let letting you know that we're getting married and if you want to join in our celebration all the guests did. Oh my they God. came out of their rooms and they joined us and oh we God. all had a fantastic time. That's so amazing. It, the good news is that the wedding lasted. Yes. The yes. marriage lasted. Yes, you're you know? still married. We're still which married. Which is wonderful. Yeah, it's really great. W what's your secret to, to a successful marriage? Oh, j just be uh, somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually had an interesting uh, I feel career because you actually started on Wall Street in the market yes. in the stock market yes. and you left all of that to to really pursue your yes. acting I was sort of been given I was given a choice mm -hmm. um, by my boss at the time he was like look you can't because I was sort of doing vampire lesbians of Sodom at night mm -hmm. and working during the day as a you know librarian slash research manager for an, an investment council firm mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, you could really become like a junior associate or a partner eventually if you really committed yourself. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I can't even add or subtract, <laughs> but that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so what I did was that I decided I was going to take a pre-calculus class mm -hmm. to sort of see if I could really handle maybe a pre-sort of MBA program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, and earlier... That week, Charles Bush, the playwright, yeah. had sort of said to me, we'd really love it if you could be like a full-time actress with us in our company. Oh. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a very big biz businesswoman, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> I walked into the pre-calculus class. She started writing some things on the uh, blackboard. Uh, it might have been Russian, <laughs> Greek. I don't know what language it was. I didn't know what was happening. I went up to her. I said, Professor Stone, this was a pleasure. Um, I will not be coming back. And she just kind of looked at me and I said, I just realized I'm in the wrong class. Mm. I just got up. I went right to a phone booth. And I called Charles Bush. And I said, get that wig ready. <laughs> One event that you have been doing for the past six years is mm -hmm. Broadway Belts, yes. which is a benefit for the Pul Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. Yes. And coincidentally, Ralphie was then diagnosed yes. with it. We were very, very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. Ralph yes. got the transplant, mm -hmm. so he is alive. Mm -hmm. And we're so grateful. Uh, and we've learned so much. I've learned more about lungs than I ever <laughs> wanted to know. But 
I, we are very grateful, and we decided to uh, help fundraise for the foundation. Mm -hmm. And this year, we had so much demand, mm -hmm. we had to change venues because so many people wanted to come. Yes. It's so going to be in the Edison Ballroom. It's at the Edison Ballroom right. on February 29th. Yes, at 7 p.m. Bobby Creighton and the cast of Cagney are going to perform. Oh, my God. And there might be dancing involved. Oh, my God. Yes. That's going to be amazing. Yes. It's going to be a great evening. It's going to be an amazing evening. And you can go to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation website and purchase tickets. Yes. And what do you think the one thing since the transplant and that he survived it and everything, what do, what do you feel is like the one thing that got stronger between the two of you? We are even more in love mm -hmm. with artists mm -hmm. and art and the theater. Mm -hmm. We are even more appreciative mm -hmm. of people's talents mm -hmm. uh, than ever before. Mm. We don't take anything beautiful or mm -hmm. artful mm -hmm. or uh, we don't take any of that for granted. Mm -hmm. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. And again, everybody, don't forget to come February 29th, Broadway Belt, 7 p.m., the Edison Ballroom. We'll have the ticket link up at the end of the episode. Yes. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And now stay tuned for Jefferson Harmon as he interprets Julie's dream. Yes. Yes. Do you have a dream in particular? I do. Um, it wasn't, actually, I don't remember last night's. That's okay. I was with my husband, although somehow he kind of receded into the background, but we had gone to a theater. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to interview the cast of Fiddler on the Roof, but I got into the theater and it was a much smaller theater than the the theater that Fiddler on the Roof is, is in. It, is actually playing in, yeah. And I was a little surprised by that. It was much smaller. I met with someone, and I don't remember who, someone I didn't know, and uh, they said, oh, yes, Julie, we want you to meet with the cast. I said, oh, well, you know, I'd love to meet with, you know, Tevya, you know. I didn't say Danny Burstyn. Right. You know, I just said Tevya and the family. And they were like, well, we want you to meet really the lovers. And I was like, hmm, this is odd, because that's they're not like the main players of Fiddler. And then they were like, well, there's been a little change in the way we're doing Fiddler. And it involved the two leads of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 which was another show that I did see and I loved, but I was like, they're not in Fiddler. That's a whole nother show. And they were like, well, it's changed and they are in Fiddler and they are the leads of Natasha Pierre, but they're also gonna be doing Fiddler. And then suddenly I was trying to climb up on the stage and the stage kind of changed and it suddenly was the Ryman Auditorium it was like I was at the Grand Old Opry, except it was the Ryman, which was the old Grand Old Opry, yes. and it's a much smaller stage. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get up there, and I saw like a Carrie Underwood kind of person with like a cowboy hat on, mm -hmm. and I was really confused because nobody was explaining why Fiddler was changing, why we were going to be why I was interviewing the lovers of Natasha Pierre, why they were in Fiddler, why were we suddenly in the Ryman, why am I now seeing country music people coming from backstage to the front of house. And I couldn't also, I couldn't figure out where the stairs were. They actually have like people who have carved their names yes. into the wood mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they wanted me to look at those names. And, and I was trying to get over the lip of the front of it to see those names. But I was so confused because I kept thinking, I came here to interview the cast of Fiddler. It suddenly became about lovers. And now I'm in the, at the Ryman in Tennessee. I think at that point I kind of gave up and I woke up and uh, 
I was sort of laughing when I woke up. Do you know anyone in the cast of Fiddler? I do. I, I know a, a lot of people. A lot of people. In yes. Fiddler. And I knew people in Natasha Pierre, too. Is anyone in your family Jewish? No. Okay. Although I definitely feel I ident identify with okay. Jews. Okay. When you looked at the names on the stage of the Ryman, did any actually stand out? Were you able to focus on any of them? Um, well, the letter R was in there, and okay. I thought maybe it was something to do with Ralph or the Ryman. When you say that the Fiddler stage at the beginning of the dream was smaller yes. than the actual, and then you said you saw um, Natasha, would you say that the stage that you saw in your dream was the size of that yes. stage? Yes, okay. it was much more yeah. that. Yes, okay. okay. And would you say that that stage was bigger or smaller than the Ryman? Right. Kind of similar. Okay, so you see we're starting to make connections yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You're sorting through something that's stressing you out. Right. And you're doing it in kind of a almost comical way, almost a fun way. That's why uh -huh. when you wake up, you're feeling refreshed from it. You're yeah, feeling, you're right. I was, yeah. Yeah, you're not feeling like this was anything stressful, but there's, there's something that uh, almost like you're looking for something. Mm -hmm. And like it's a treasure hunt. And right. instead of X marks the spot, in this case, R marks the spot. Right, okay? right, right. Hence the Ryman. Uh, the reason I asked about the Jewish connection was because, obviously, Fiddler is about, you know, tradition. And, yes. Uh, Jewish tradition in particular, and in a very specific time period, right. um, which is, I believe, the early 1900s, is it not? Yes. So, in, in other words, there's, there's a part of you that knows this before going into the dream. And you're starting to connect these different symbols in your mind because there's something for you to look at either in that time period or in these two shows or in the time when you were at Cambridge. Mm. Now, you also said you were at the Ryman. Somehow right. all of these things connect. Yes. And the way that they connect is really what the dream is about. So it, it, in other words, what's happening is something huh. in your present day is mirroring something about tradition, about what it's like to exist in a time of war, about what it's like to be mm. around family in a time of war, yeah. uh, what it's like to be romantic, because really the emphasis in the first part of this dream is on the lovers, yes. Okay, which is not the main character. I right. mean, really, it's about the father worrying about his kids yes, who are yes, the lovers. Yes. So, um, you know, in, in this case, what you've done is your dream has changed the prominent role in the show to reflect the other show. Yeah. Okay, there is something in um, a one-on-one -on -one love relationship, hence, Ralph, mm -hmm. um, that is specifically calling for your attention. Yeah. And that whatever it is mirrors something that was happening with you around the time that you saw the show in Cambridge. Mm. And that it also mirrors the time that you were in Tennessee at the Ryman. And that you're kind of connecting the two. And that the last thing that you see is the letter on the stage and it's the letter R, which as you say could mean Ryman, could mean Ralph. In a way it means all of it. You know, my husband has had this terrible illness. Yes. And um, I'm involved very, very strongly with his care. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm his primary caregiver. Yeah. And I have actually had to turn down some roles is he, to take care of him. Is he um, out and about? Or is he, he is out and about, but, oh, you is. know, but uh, it, 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 he's had a few side effects recently mm -hmm. that have actually sidelined him a little. Okay. Um, but it's very interesting. I just never thought this. And then that, the Ryman means a lot to him. Mm -hmm. He loved the play Natasha Pierre. Mm -hmm. Fiddler actually means a lot to me. It's not as much involved with Ralph, but family is very big with Ralph. Ralph has five children, mm -hmm. four daughters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, but also the fact that Fiddler is your show and Natasha Pierre is his yeah, show. Yeah, his show. That in and of itself yes. is the lovers. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You love that show, he loves this show, and in this dream they come together. And we both love the Ryman. And now come back to Fiddler on the Roof, which, right. is, which is a musical about tradition, right. which is set in um, obviously a different country, right. but it's about the music in that show is about the traditions of that people in that country, yes. which is mirroring Nashville in your in your dream, yeah, in your yeah, connection yeah. to. In other words, those music um, styles are completely different. Those traditions are completely different. But at the same time, family is at the core of both of them. That's right. And you're connecting the two in this dream again because it's really about your relationship with Ralph. Yeah. And what this is about 
what I'm getting from this, mm -hmm. the word that comes to mind is adapting. This is about adaptation. Yeah. Because in each instance, you're being given a challenge that is different from how you expect it to be. In the first yes. part of the dream, um, you go to Fiddler, but it's on a much smaller stage. Right. Um, then the, the lead is not the lead, now the lovers are the lead. And then right. you're finding out that they're also in Natasha and Pierre. Right. And so that's now connecting the two shows, and the two shows are about the lovers, which symbolize you and Ralph. Yeah. So then huh. you find out that that is, um, your, your memory of that is, is to a smaller stage in Cambridge, which right. again reflects the fact that, that Fiddler is on a smaller stage right. and the Ryman is on a smaller stage. In other right. words, it's more intimate. Yes. Okay, so this is about intimacy. It's about you adapting how you navigate your relationship with Ralph. Mm. And so at times that becomes difficult because of the circumstances of his illness. Right. And so things happen like you get to the stage and you can't find a way onto it. Yeah. You know you're supposed to be on there and right. you can't find stairs. Right. So what it's saying is you need to learn how to adapt and the way to what the way that it gives you to adapt, if I remember what you said correctly, was that you're given an instruction which is to look for the names on the stage. Right. Okay, meaning to Put yourself in that tradition. Put mm. yourself in, connect yourself with that tradition because that's what he's connected to. Yes. So it's, what it's saying is deepen your connection with him in order to adapt to the, the ways that life is shrinking Right. The space yes. around you. Yes. You know? so that's very wise, very wise. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that, and I'm really, I'm just getting this from, from what, you, what you told me. The, the relationship you have with him is very strong. Your relationship to these shows is very strong. Right. So is his. Right. Your relationship to that particular show, his, where they took place, and to this theater, which you didn't even expect to have the same connection with that you did. Right, right. You know, uh, because of him, partly. Right. But also, I think, because there's something for you to maybe delve into a little bit more there. The, the point of this is that it is, in some ways, a treasure hunt that you have yeah. these different connections and that each time the space seems to be getting a little bit smaller. Part of that means that there's less area to search. Right. That you're actually, what it, it's just kind of an oddball yes. dream way of saying you're getting closer to your goal. Mm. And the fact that you're trying to find whatever that treasure is and at the end of the dream that you just see the letter R, you don't need to see any of the names. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It says look for the names, but what you focus on is the letter. Right. And the letter itself has power. Yeah. So uh, what it's doing is it's showing you your connection to this other person and how despite the fact that the world in some ways is shrinking, um, that you're able to adapt just fine. Because you maintain your traditions, because you maintain your connections to music and to family. What happens is your dream takes these different things that seem like they're completely unrelated and throws them all into one salad. Right. And what I've learned from what I do is that that salad makes a lot of sense if you just take a longer look at it. Yes. And so yes. Um, it seems disconnected. Like one of the things that I've found is that when people come to mm. me and they have uh, two or three different dreams that they present to me at the same time, those dreams can be completely unrelated right. about things that have nothing in common. Right. And I will find how they all connect. They all because wow. it was, and they don't even necessarily have to have had them at the same time. It's the fact that they are bringing them to me at that moment. Mm. And it is, it is the act of introducing them all at the same time in one, in one space, in one conversation, that shows me that somehow these dreams relate and then I'm able to connect those dots. Do you feel that you, those well, traits have, have grown more with you as the time has gone on that you've yes. taken care of Ralph much yes. more? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely, and, and I would also say, <clears throat> it's, and this was not in the dream, my mom was not in the dream. However, I've also been sort of caring for mm -hmm. my mom, yes. and she's almost 92, and, and I have found that I have had to get in touch more with my caregiver side, mm -hmm. which, you know, is, was not something that, you know, I was born with, I don't <laughs> think. I think I was born with, you know, the diva side. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, and the comedian side. And the comedian side. But um, I have really developed that, and I would like to even develop it further. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is important. These traditions are important. They've become touchstones for people. I see with my mom and with Ralph mm -hmm. the comfort that traditions bring, mm -hmm. the 
well, not only the comfort, but it also helps them uh, process things better. Yeah. Again, though, I would never have put those connections together. Well, you know, when you look at uh, a, a company of actors, you have a cast. Yes. That's a family as well. Oh, and, that's one of the reasons I got into theater. And, and doing the show itself is a tradition because you're taking the same script and doing it over and over yes. again. So these are rituals in a way oh, yes. that we repeat over time and with different people. And we, you know, we have these amazing experiences and connections around them. I mean, it's, it's a great way to meet friends and, 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 to, and for people to become family over time. So you can see how there's all these different connections in the way that you view theater yes. now, now as opposed to maybe when you started um, that are deeper. Let's drink a toast. To yes. tradition. To tradition. To tradition. All right. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. And your last name starts with an R, That's too. That's right. That's true. <laughs>